Moondance is about a couple who meet in their 20s, fall in love, love at first sight. She is flying high as a political lobbyist, he is an investment banker, and um, she doesn't want to have children until she's ready, although he does. And in fact, she leaves it far too late, and when she tries to have a baby, she's unable to conceive, and they end up going through IVF. And the toll that IVF takes on them as individuals and as a couple is, uh, was, is what I explore in the novel. So why did you choose to write about IVF? I did do IVF many, many years ago, and I thought it would be fascinating to write about it uh, in a way that pulled no punches, that, um, that had no euphemisms, and that basically showed the reality of the tests and the treatment as they, as they are. You have to inject yourself for probably 10 to 14 days um, with um, a drug called Gonal F, which stimulates the egg production and ripens the eggs on, on your ovaries. And then after two weeks, you go under general anaesthetic and they aspirate the eggs, um, trying to keep them intact. And you uh, crazily clamour to know how many eggs you've got when you come round out of the anaesthetic. They put them in a petri dish with a dollop of sperm and you hope. Um, and then the following day, they will tell you how many are fertilised. And then the day after that, they will choose the healthiest, best quality embryos. And in my case, they put three embryos back. But it seems to me that the worst bit is the wait at the end to see if it's worked. Absolutely. The, the two-week wait, as it's known, is, uh, is full of anguish, really. It's the emotional blitz um, that you take and that your partner takes as well. Of course, she takes the physical burden, but emotionally it's just as bad for him. Um, and then, you know, at the end of it, you may bleed and you may not be pregnant, so you've been through four weeks of hell, really, and, um, and you may not get there. So there's the technical process, which you cover in the book, but actually there is so much more in this book. There's a lot about the emotions involved and the social side of it. There's a huge impact, of course, on their relationship. I mean, it's easy to see from what you've been saying how people fall out of love because it's such a mechanical process. It's a real passion killer. That's true. I mean, they start off very close together um, and then almost from the moment that she has to inject herself and she feels hard done to of having to take the physical burden, they almost start to slide apart from that moment, really. We shouldn't make it sound too grim because it's actually quite light-hearted in many ways as well. There are moments of humour. Yes, no, you're right. I didn't want it to come across as a, as a kind of a misery um, novel. I think also the important thing to say is there's hope. There always has to be hope and there is hope in the novel. And something else that comes out in the book is the emotions of the father, because so often in these conversations it's very much the woman, it's centred on the woman, and obviously you're tunnelled visioned and you've got the, the physical brunt of it all. And the man kind of gets neglected, and you do bring out how important it is that the father's feelings are actually taken into consideration. That's interesting, actually. I mean... You know, my husband and I case, we um, had just met, we'd only been together a couple of years and we were still quite smitten and so the, we actually bonded together in the face of adversity, there was sadness but we kind of stuck together. We didn't tell family and friends really, we basically turned inwards. Uh, but what I wanted to do with the novel was to explore what it might be like emotionally for a couple who's further down the line, maybe in a more humdrum relationship. And so I basically threw everything at them uh, that I could and um, and 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 explored the impact of that. You've said before that the main character, Kat Catriona, is not a very nice person. I didn't find that. I thought she was a real woman because women aren't nicey-nice all the time. She's an ambitious career woman. She has to be on top of her game. Yeah, I mean, she's very flawed. She's a very rounded character, I think, I've been told. I tried to make her rounded. What I wanted was, I didn't want to take a fluffy, lovely uh, lady who was going to go through this hell. I wanted to take somebody who was slightly arrogant, slightly entitled, so that I, I would create more drama by throwing these terrible things at her. Um, but I still hoped that I could pull off some empathy for her, despite the fact that the reader might not particularly like her. One thing that I think will resonate with a lot of women is how you have to be a split personality. You have to be sharp and on top of your game and completely in charge and in control at work when maybe personally, emotionally, you're falling apart. I mean, she's a woman who's in control. A lot of women today are in control, aren't they? I know I myself like to be in control. And um, this is the, the one part of her life that she's, she's out of control and she can't control at all. And she unravels, basically, 
until actually she's a shadow of herself. And then she does wonder really, why have I been in control of my life? Should I just have left my life at random and, uh, and just, you know, taken what was thrown at me rather than actually try to be super in control of it?